good to be like with this crowd scene behind us. Yeah, you know, the nice little backdrop, cityscape, crowds. Where's Andrew? Come on, goals. This guy's always networking, networking. always networking, yeah. Goalless! <laughs> You get it. We've got a diva waiting over here. Come on. Okay, I'm here with Max Blumenthal of Video Fame from the internet. He's uh, here with us at the Time Magazine Swampland party, enjoying the free booze of mainstream media. Uh, what's your next target these days? Are you? Are you what are you working? Are you working? Um, are you doing a video about the hateful people here at Daily Coast? <laughs> The, uh, what are they, Lago Fascists? The Lago according, Fascists. According to Joe Klein. That's right. Uh, we were looking for Slash Nazis, according to Bill O'Reilly. By the right. way, we are outside Joe Klein. I mean, Time Magazine's party. That's right. Where uh, Joe Klein did not show up. Disappointed. I wanted to ask him why he's there. Anyway. Um, Do you have your camera? I don't have my camera. I'm kind of on break. It's a very uh, rigorous process, and it requires a cameraman. My videographer, Thomas Showmaker, couldn't make it. And, you know, I'm laying off the liberals. I tried to do a, a piece on the liberals at the Take Back America conference oh, this year. Like it. Not only did they reject it, but it was sort of uh, hard to do because liberals play along. All right, these particular liberals at the grassroots level play along, and they try to be intentionally fun. And then the people at the top are... are uh, if, if my video did not meet a threshold of dull earnesty, they won't accept it. Because these are like, you know, typical, the liberals at the top of this organization that like Sean Hannity and Ann Coulter make fun of and say liberals don't have a sense of humor. They're very serious. It was really funny, you know, when we got essentially ejected from the conference after they rejected our video backstage, their big banquet, we come out and there's some rabbi on stage like, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. And then Jesse Jackson comes on and says, like, let us pray, let us bow our heads and pray for the ones who came before us. And the flame is away soon. Quandrastulation is the flame last of the, of the symbolicism, and I support the life of Terry Shavu. You know, so it was like the liberal stereotypes to the maximum, you know? And so I was kind of glad that I didn't get it shown. But the point is, it's like if you build it, they will come. Like, I got a voice, and it's just like, go for the right. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Okay. And because they don't like to conduct business in the light of day. And you see that in my Christians United for Israel video, especially. Saying, this conference has nothing to do with the end times. And I ask yeah, you people, pretty much get kicked out of everything. And then they can kick me out as soon as I start showing what's really... Right. So sorry, I interrupted the you. You said, why are you here? Well, yeah, I mean... When, when, I, when I just start recording, doing basic reporting, they kick me out. Now, if I was a print reporter, and I've been there so many times, dozens of times, at right-wing conferences, events, rallies, as a print reporter, I'm not as much of a threat. Because in print... Hey, we're... Come on, I'm a TV. Hello, hello, people. It's, it's the people, prospect. Hello. Where are you guys going? Dueling, What's the next part? Videotaping each other, videotaping each other? <laughs> Mark Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Making a... Hi, Mark Smith. We're late, Juan. I am late. It's true. That's Juan Cole. Juan Cole, we, we talked to him earlier. Got him earlier. We got him to say that uh, so this is the cool, Cossacks right? are his uh, homeboys. The who? The Cossacks? Cool. I mean, I didn't even ask. He just volunteered that. Well, what I'm saying is, like, print is so much different because I can report the most outrageous thing that someone said. For instance, Tom Coburn's chief of staff, Michael Schwartz, told me at a conference on the... Uh, a right-wing conference against uh, what they consider judicial tyranny after the Terry Scheibel charade, yes. that he wants to not only impeach federal judges, he wants to impale them because he's a real radical. Jesus. And I reported Ouch. that, and it did make waves, but yeah. if I had that on video... It would have been it, huge. It's a different level of proof. For There's me. no YouTube in print. Right. Well, people, when they, they, they say, I've got to see it to believe it, and so that's what I'm doing. Because for so many years, I've reported on this as a print reporter, and now I'm showing people what I've been seeing so they can actually believe this shit. Um, there because it is a little bit unbelievable. <laughs> and, you know, I think truth is stranger than fiction. So I'm doing a book now, and it's about the culture of the right. And essentially my theory is that uh, there is a culture of personal crisis behind the politics of resentment. 
and I profile various individuals who are influential and the right, but who aren't elected officials. And so they control the movement. They're kind of activists and organizers. Right. And the most prominent, the most prominent among them is James Dobson. What's his personal question? He doesn't have a personal crisis, but he understands this culture. Why is it in the Christian right that the most influential figure is not a religious leader, not a preacher, not a theologian, but a psychologist? Like a child, a child psychologist who tells you to beat your kids in order to instill respect for authority and government. It's because he, understands, because he understands who the people are that he needs to be. And then he reverend Dobson? No. No, no, that's a common misconception. He has no religious credentials. He's a child psychologist. And so this movement, I mean, it's, it's, there's a cult around Dobson. And once you get sucked in, then he starts converting you into a Republican shock troop. And that's how he wields influence. And at election time, he can flip a switch and all these people come out and vote for whoever he says to vote for. And that's why he's the most powerful person. So he exploits the cult of personal crisis because he's tapped into it. And then he uses the politics of resentment to mobilize them. And, you know, all the people that are his top lieutenants have had personal crises. They, like Phil Barres. Yeah. And these people are sadomasochist. Okay, not just sexually. David Matt Bitter was, was sadomasochistic sexually. He liked to wear a diaper and get stomped on with stiletto heels. At the same time, he was sadomasochistic politically because he held a private meeting with James Dobson in which he said, I, I submit to you and whatever you want me to do and I'm morally pure. So that's the masochistic element. He has he needs a strong leader to motivate him. At the same time, he's sadistic because he attacks gays and he attacks social pariahs like Muslims and minorities, you know, opposing affirmative action. This is the mentality. This is the best way to describe authoritarians. And that's what my book is going to do. Look for the book. We're going to see if there's any other parties with free booze. I've heard Huffington Post has Say, something. And we're going to look for some sadomasochism. <laughs> we'll look for some sadomasochism. Diapers? And we're going to let us. And we're going to party with some social pariahs. <laughs> <laughs> awesome.